do in our programs, it's always interesting to me when we have programs that may tie together. And uh, some of you were here when Leo Swagger uh, did a program about uh, storm, stone, stone buildings about a year ago. And as I drive back and forth out toward the farm, I go by the Tucker House that uh, Leo told us a story about putting a big rock over the window. As a, uh, oh, it's a lentil, I guess, uh, uh, across that window. And uh, I just had a fascinating afternoon with him just driving around one Saturday afternoon look at the rock houses that the Swaggers had built. And thinking about our history in uh, Coleman or anywhere else, you know, one thing we all hate to see are uh, buildings being torn down, done away with, like we struggle with the Hayes home. Sometimes it's hard to find another use for uh, residential houses. And uh, I really admire everyone in town who has made an effort to redo old houses, uh, whether to keep them as residential or, in this case, to uh, put it to a professional use. And really appreciate Stephen and Annette Parker coming today. As I drove back and forth every week, I watched the progress on uh, their house over there that they're going to tell us about. An interesting thing to me of talking to Annette here is that uh, they've owned the house less than a year. So they've done all that in less than a year. So it's quite remarkable. And I know Annette's got some stories and uh, some, she's interacted with Leo Swagger too. So, <laughs> 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 so uh, Stephen and Annette, however you all want to present it, we'd, Number one, we appreciate you restoring the house. Thank Number two, we appreciate you coming and sharing it with us. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Yes, I'll start. Well, thank you all for having us. I, I truly appreciate it. Uh, we never realized really what we were getting into when we bought the house. We originally opened our office and we're in the uh, old um, Stephen, uh, the Bold, plaza, boldy, moldy, <laughs> leaking <laughs> plaza, downtown plaza, downtown plaza, which was right across from the courthouse, and that's that's where we started. Well, when they decided they were going to tear the court, uh, the uh, not the courthouse, but tear that place down and build the bank, uh, we started looking for a place, and we found uh, a rental, and we started renting down the street from the courthouse on 31 from Betty Fisher. And that was her home place at one time and her husband's home place. They both had lived there um, earlier in their lives. And so she was not interested in selling it, but she rented it. So we love the feel of having an old house. It made our clients feel more comfortable because we're very um, involved with family law. And uh, it just helped, and we're attorneys, by the way, for those of you that don't know. And it just had a hand, uh, uh, family feel and made people feel more comfortable. So when we started looking for a place to purchase, we were looking for another house. And we thought, well, we want an old house to restore and fix up. So we had no idea that this house uh, was going on the market. We had seen it, gone by there for several years ourselves, and noticed that it had kind of grown up around it and gotten into disrepair somewhat, but didn't know the story behind it and didn't know what was going on with it. And one day we were sitting at the light and we saw this lady walking out with this big handmade sign that said for sale by owner. I said, Stephen, turn right here. And so, and so we turned in and started talking to who we now know as Vicki Tucker, who um, was the granddaughter. Uh, Ma'am? She looks just like her mother. She does. She does. But she's the granddaughter of the original uh, Mr. Tucker who had the house built in 1947. And we started talking with her and came to pass that we made a deal pretty much right there and, and wound up buying the house. She took the sign back and put it behind the garage and as the saying goes, it's the rest is history. We purchased the house and did not close until early April of 2011, right before the tornadoes. So the house that we were in didn't sustain terrible damage, but there was um, some roof damage, some windows were blown out, so we knew that we were going to have to um, be moving out of that place so that they could renovate that and fix up what had been damaged. So we 
as they say, got on the ball and really pushed um, to try to get contractors. We worked as our own contractors. Uh, we subcontracted out to folks and did everything we could ourselves and got my parents and Stephen's parents, anybody that we could get to help us come and help. And it was a, a labor of love because we fell in love with the house. We really did. And one time while we were working last summer, I think we wound up moving um, actually June 1st. It was not completed, but we knew we needed to get moved so that they could start on the other house. Uh, so we got moved in and uh, we were out there just working away and this gentleman stopped by and who you know as Leo Swagger. <laughs> he came by and he said, uh, hey, are y'all tearing this house down? We said, no, sir, we're not, we're not tearing it down. We're, we're uh, fixing it up. We're going to put an office in here. And he said, well, it's a good thing. He said, because I helped build this in the summer of 1947 when I was 17 years old. And he said, and I sure would hate to see it torn down. And so I started talking to him and got a little bit of history then. And uh, he told a funny story. He said that uh, they had been working on the house all day. He said they had worked from sun up to sundown. They worked all day building the fireplace. And I have a few pictures. Uh, I didn't realize until I had put the pictures in the album that I don't have anything of the finished product on the inside. I focused everything on the outside and I have pictures of when it was torn up on the inside but nothing of the finished product. So I guess you'll have to come when we have an open house and, or just stop by any time. We'd love for you to stop by and see it. We're, we're very proud of it. But uh, Mr. Swagger said they had worked all day and said uh, Mr. Tucker came in from the store and most of you know the uh, kind of odd shaped, triangular shaped building that was Tucker's store over on 278. That was the Mr. Tucker that owned this house and had it built. And he came in and he looked and he said, this chimney's too close to the door. He said, but Mr. Tucker, we have worked all day long and it has taken us all day to build this chimney. And he said, I don't care, it's too close to the door. You gotta tear it down and move it over. And he said, he made us tear it down and move it over, and he said it cost him $75 to do that. <laughs> I cannot believe he made us do that and it cost him $75. You know, that was a lot of money back in 1947, but uh, uh, we also had heard that uh, Mr. Swagger had said that his dad, when he did masonry work or, or rock work, sometimes he would put uh, an artifact, an Indian artifact in the building somewhere I think you have something in your house, as a matter of fact. Um, and I asked him, and he said, no, not in that house. He said, my dad wasn't there all the time. And so it wasn't just his work, so he didn't put anything in that one that he knew of. But I've looked. Some of them have the ground, grindstone, you know, mm -hmm. ground out there. Well, now, now, we do have the grindstone, and nobody knew what it was. And, uh, the lady we bought it from, Vicki, didn't know what it was, and I said, this is an old grindstone. Oh, you're talking about a grist I'm talking mill grindstone. a grist mill okay. grindstone. The Indian thing he put in was often just a little square rock, and in the middle, it's uh, ground out where they ground. Oh, the okay. It's, it's just usually about like that big, we'll hollowed out place mm -hmm. in the middle. Okay. Well, hey, I don't know. Uh, we haven't found anything yet, and he could not recall having something in there. But I asked him. I said. Uh, well, why don't you write me some interesting facts or something, write me a letter or something. And he said, okay, I'll do that. And so in January, I got this letter from him. And, uh, well, he just dropped by and, and left it. And I'm going to read it to you because I think it's pretty interesting. It says, this is to certify, I thought that was good. This is to certify that in the 1940s, Leo Swagger Sr. Swagger Sr contracted with J.R. Tucker to do the stonework on a house to be built on a corner lot at West Main and 3rd Street Southwest. Leo Sr. furnished the stone from his quarry on Branch Road West. The stone cutting and laying was done by his sons, Leo Jr. and Frank. The majority of the stonework was done by Leo Jr. because Frank was working on other jobs at the same time. <laughs> now I'm going to stop there and tell you that most of you know that I've been campaigning. Well, while campaigning, I ran into uh, Leo's brother, Fred, <laughs> and I said, oh, are you related to Leo? I said, we uh, remodeled the house that he built, and he said, he didn't build that house. I want to tell you right now, there was four of us, my daddy and my other brother, Frank, and 
uh, he said there were four of us, and he would let, ha lead you to believe that he did it all by himself, but he did not. And he just set me straight real quick. I said, okay, I didn't know. I, I didn't know. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> he said, I'll come by, or you can call me any time, and I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> okay, I will. And so uh, that's on my list of things to do is to call him and find out the real story. So you need to call Paul, the other brother that has worked on it. Right. <laughs> oh, me. So um, it, it's just been very fun and very interesting. Uh, he did say, I remember uh, further in the letter, I remember one thing about my work on this house. I was laying stone on the south wall and had cut a large stone to lay over the, the southeast basement window. J.R. Tucker's son, Luther, came by and said, are you going to lay that, <laughs> try to lay that rock all by yourself? And I answered, yes, unless you want to help me lift it. And he replied, there is no way I'm going to break my back trying to lift that thing. So with Luther standing there watching, I picked up the stone and laid it in place. <laughs> Luther said, you're the strongest little man I've ever seen, but lifting rocks that heavy, you'll never live to be old. And he says, well, at the present, I am 86 years old. Frank passed away at age of 63. I am still working at the uh, Ava Maria Grotto, where I have built the miniature building since 1963, two years after uh, Brother Joseph died. Signed this 27th day of January, 2012, Leo's Year. <laughs> and he, he gave me a handwritten copy, and I want you to know it's the most beautiful penmanship. It is beautiful. I, I don't think I could write that pretty, and, and he is 86 years old, but he typed it also so that it would be nice and formal and signed it. So anyway, I've been very pleased to uh, have gotten to know these gentlemen and and interact with them. It's been a lot of fun. Um, also, we kept being told during the time that we were working on this that former Sheriff Cramp Waldrop lived in the house. Mm -hmm. And I thought, probably people are just mistaken. It was maybe a rock house on down the street because there's you know, a few more rock houses on down West Main there. But I know Cramp's granddaughter, uh, Becky Lynn, and her mother, uh, I got in touch with her and talked to her a little bit. She didn't have much time, and I really want to talk to her more. But she lived in the house as a child, and he did live there both terms that he was sheriff. That was where he lived because he wanted to be close to his work. He wanted to be in the city. <laughs> so he lived there, raised his kids there, and uh, she will tell you that there's ghosts in the house. And I said, what? Yes, there's ghosts in the house. Doors would close on their own. And Now, we've noticed that. Uh, I just thought it was the doors didn't want to stay open. I just thought maybe it wasn't level. I don't know. I never thought about ghosts. And so now I'm a little leery. Oh, well, I don't think I want to be there late at night. But anyway. She didn't tell me who the ghost was. Okay. The ghost of who. <laughs> she just said a ghost. That doors would close and things would happen that were unexplainable. And we've really not had that other than... The, the doors, there are, when you walk in the front door and to the right was what they used as the um, dining room, and they have French doors. And they're on the original old hinges. We found those up in the attic and restored those and put them back up. And you can open them, and if you open them all the way back, most of the time they will stay, but they do tend to creep, and it makes the most terrible noise and it's it is kind of scary to some people because they've they've started to close and I've had people look around and say what what is that what what is that so it is a little spooky but it's really not too too bad um, in restoring the house we did have to do uh, we tried to save the integrity of the house as much as possible we had to do a couple of things um, that we didn't really want to do but we had to do because we had to make it. Uh, handicapped accessible because it was going to be a business and we also had to follow code so that it would be uh, fire safety rules would be adhered to and that kind of thing, code for the city. The one thing that uh, upset me the most is we had to widen the front door. So that beautiful rock work, we were really worried about what we were going to do and we really told them about that. Are we going to rent a saw and get a a block mason or get somebody to come over and cut the rock or exactly what are we going to do. So 
uh, we knew personally the person that built uh, the fireplace at the Cracker Barrel, that huge stone fireplace there, and he did a really good job. And uh, like I said, I've known this gentleman all my life. So I contacted him, and he said, uh, came up and he looked at it, and he said, yeah, we can take care of that. That's no problem. I said, okay. Well, I didn't ask him how he was going to do it. I thought, well, I'll just leave it to him. Well, we came uh, in from court one afternoon, and they had a jackhammer. And they were jackhammering the rock on the door, by the side of the door. And I almost just cried right there. I just almost got sick at my stomach. I said, what, what are you doing? He said, it'll be fine. Don't worry about it. It'll be fine. And I said, let's just go home. I can't watch. I just, I can't watch. So we went home, and sure enough, they had saved all the rock and all the pieces that they had jackhammered out, saved them in a little pile, and widened the door to the correct width, and then he put the rock back. Mm -hmm. And I promise you, you cannot tell, other than the mortar is a little bit lighter, or excuse me, a little bit darker than the other mortar, but you cannot tell that they had a jackhammer over there, jackhammering on that door. It was, it was amazing to me. Uh, the other thing we had to do was uh, around the basement because it was a, there's an entrance from the outside to the basement. And in order to bring it up to the same level, bye -bye. to bring it up to the same level as the parking lot and the uh, ramp to make it handicapped accessible, uh, we had to, they had to lay uh, rock around the outside uh, top part of the doorway. And I thought, well, that's just going to look really odd. And he said, again, it, don't worry about it. I'll make it look good. It'll be okay. And he did. He laid rock and put about a foot of rock around the top ledge uh, going down to the basement. And it looks really nice. And you can tell that that was uh, probably put there afterward, but it, was, it looks fine and it's not awkward or anything like that. The one thing that I was, the, I think, the saddest about was there was a huge, huge magnolia tree that was right behind the house. A lot of folks didn't even know there was a garage behind the house because the magnolia tree covered it up. But we had to have that cut because it was a safety issue uh, because of those big uh, pods that come off the magnolia tree. That was a, a safety fall hazard for folks. Plus, that was where we were going to put our a parking lot so we had to have it cut for the parking lot and we got one of the longtime tree people here in Coleman to come and cut the tree and it took him quite a long time because it was so large and he told us he said I've been doing this 30 something years and he said I've never seen a tree a magnolia tree this large so we really hated to do that that was very sad I did take some pictures of it before we cut it but we had to do that in order like I said in order to uh, build the parking lot and the ramp and everything. One other thing, when we were restoring it, the uh, front porch had settled. So it was down a little bit from the, the door. So we knew that in order to make it handicapped accessible, it had to be level uh, entrance going into the door. So we came up with, we were going to try to maybe dig down and jack the porch up or see what we had could do. And when we dug down, there are no footers under that house. It was, they just dug down to uh, bedrock and built on the stable ground there. And I thought that was pretty amazing because there were probably only three or maybe three or four cracks in the whole outside exterior walls. There, there just weren't very many cracks or settling type of issues that you have. Um, things were level. Uh, that was one thing that my dad, he's a, a carpenter, and he was very impressed of, about how level and how in, in square things were. So I think the quality of the house speaks for itself. It was just wonderful, wonderful. But the solution that we came up with is we just built a wooden ramp along the side of the house, and then it goes across the front porch. We just did a, a porch in the ramp so that um, that's our entrance. Nice. Thank you. And to try to pull it all together, we got a door that had the uh, black wrought iron on it and then on the front porch we did uh, wrought iron rails to try to 
a wooden handrail on the top just to try to pull it all together and make it look um, kind of cohesive. But we thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, one of the things that we were very proud of is the entire house is solid hardwood floors. There is an attic that had never been finished. The attic um, was totally for storage. It had never been finished out uh, for livable purposes. And we thought, well, we'd like to do that, but uh, we couldn't because of code. We couldn't use it for um, public space, public access. So we are doing using it for storage. I store Stephen up there. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, that's his little little area that he goes to retreat. He has a little antique desk up there, and uh, we went ahead and dropped walls in it. And we do use it for storage, but. Uh, it is the prettiest part of the house. It really is. The whole entire attic was floored with heart pine. It had never been finished. It was just the, the bare heart pine. And we just sanded it down and finished it natural so that the beauty of the wood could show. Uh, cleaned all the rock and they did a um, light finish on the rock, a uh, sealant, a sealant on the rock. And as I said, it's beautiful. And he has a uh, half bath up there his dad taught at uh, St. Bernard for 13 years. 13 years. He before was the before the college closed. And so when the college closed, uh, he got his little boy uh, a desk. It was a student, an old student desk. And that's what Stephen studied at or was supposed to study at. I'm not sure he did, but he was supposed to study at that desk as a, as a child. Well, his mom was kind enough to give us that desk, and we made that into a sink. And it just really looks uh, in character and keeping with the style of the house. And it's really neat, uh, just all the little little things like that, the little touches. Uh, we kept the cabinetry in the kitchen, just painted it white. Um, the kitchen floor, I asked when we were buying the house, I said, is this uh, hardwood under here? Because it had um, linoleum and mm -hmm. layers of stuff on it. And she said, well, I don't know. I don't think so because it's always... It's, since I was a little girl, it's always been linoleum. Well, I started pulling and scraping and scraping and scraping and scraping some more. And there was hardwood under there. So it's one of the prettiest floors in the house because it's never been touched. It's just like it was original. And uh, I know I've been just talking and, and rambling and telling you a lot of things. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Stephen and see if he has anything that he wants to add. Because I know there are a lot of, uh, a lot of fun things that uh, we found and came across when we were uh, doing this, like a, like the old grist mill stone that we found. We just thought that, that was pretty cool that that was there, so. Okay. Let me ask you a question. We've been gone for 50 years, and I remember the name, Ruth the mm -hmm. Was he Urban Tubbers' brother? I don't know. I think so. Yeah, somebody else yeah, might have yeah, but I don't know. I'm sorry. They <laughs> were in Irvine, and they had all the property out west, and all of them had a big son named John L. John yes, he did. John L. He had a son named Jimmy. Did he have one? G Jimmy and Because Jimmy and L. and Faye lived in the house. Jimmy and Faye lived in the house after they got married. Yeah. Yeah, Jimmy and L. and Faye lived in the house. And they lived that time. Uh, they lived. They owned that whole block. That just house, about. and there was a house behind it, and they just tore that house down probably six years months ago. Oh. Yeah, um, I've come by the there. The great house lived on the next block, and then <laughs> yeah. on the next block, then and Vicky still owns that house. Yes, yeah. um, where it rents it out. So. J.R. Tucker was the old original. His, his name was Ransom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, uh, he's the one that started the store because. Yeah. Cause uh, Daddy would go in there and he'd buy six coconut, those little coconut macarons, mm -hmm. and he'd buy six uh, some other kind of macarons and bring them home to the to us as children. But uh, he was in there at least once or twice a week. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting old building. And out toward Jones's chapel. Everything from the chapel towards Cullman, Cullman, two miles on the north side of 278, was his. Was his. And a lot of it still is. Yeah, it's very, the, the very descendants. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Descend, yeah. 
Hill and, and he brought the first congregation of the Church of Christ to the city of God. Yeah. Okay, now, excuse me a minute while oh, I pray. <laughs> okay, Jimmy had a brother. John Ellen Perry. John Ellen who? Perry. 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 Yeah, I still Everybody see Perry. Perry yeah. yeah. <laughs> Luther Perry. Luther Perry. Yeah, I know there's two Perry Tuckers in the Luther Perry. Luther Perry. And he's still going strong. And then he's still Luther. farming some of that land out there. Yeah, he is. And runs well, cattle on And he married Alfred and Nick. Yeah. Okay, we got it straight. Excuse me, Steve. No, 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 no. I'm, we're, I we're learning as well, and that, that's part of it. Because I remember Ellen Faye finished high school with me, and sometime after they got married, I'd go over, and I've only been in the front of the house, and I'd go over and see her. Uh, and Vicki, that she thought this house front looks just like Ellen Faye. Yes, yeah, she does, yeah. Yeah, I taught Vicky in fifth grade. Yes, and then uh, there was another one. Let's Julia. See. Julia. What I got a story about that to too. <laughs> I don't know. Julia was two years older than me, okay. so I remember. All right, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Well, that, that's all right. <laughs> one of the things, and I thought we were gonna get something on Vicky, but we were going in, and the, the house had these beautiful old iron registers in the floor where they had the, the heating yeah. and cooling huh. pump and pump from. Well, we had to pick those up. They had been rusted and they needed to be refinished. Well, we get in there and we realize, well, we're going to have to vacuum some out because we've got sawdust. We've got all this where they've come in and worked the drywall and redid the plaster and all. So Annette's in there one day and she runs her hand down in the in the in the into the ductwork. Says, "Look what I found." And it was an old ashtray with a cigarette lighter in it. And I thought, hmm. <laughs> Who was sneaking a cigarette? <laughs> so I, we went to Vicky and I said, "Look at guess what we found." And she said, "No, no, no, that was Julia's bedroom." So, <laughs> <laughs> said Julia got that room after I left home. So, okay, whatever, whatever. But we, we, so much of this, the story about the house, to me, it's a, it's evolving into a story of two families, with the Schweigers and the Tuckers, and. I'm so glad somebody else wants to talk about the candy from the Tucker store. Because I told Mr. Fowler, I, I remember going in there with my grandparents to buy seed. You know, we'd go there, then you'd step on down, you had a couple of seed and feed later on. Um, but we would go there and, and do that, and then we'd always go over there, and we'd get a little bag of chocolate drops, if you ever remember those. So, and yeah, he always had the good fresh ones, they hadn't gotten hard yet, they still had the nice soft centers, and the, so. That's all. That's just a very pleasant, fun memory for me, yeah. uh, and just time that I spent. You know, Annette and I are both only children, so we were we were doted on just a little bit. Uh, on my father's side, it was Leldon and Thora Parker from Spring Hill, okay. and my mom's side it was uh, it was George and Clara Manley. Okay. Okay. Um, but anyway, so like Annette. Mom and Dad didn't send, send, us to, send us to daycare. When Mother went back to work, I stayed with my grandparents, and which is a tremendous, to me, a tremendous blessing. And I know Annette would tell you the same thing because you just, you, you learn so much more, and you just, you, you're infused with these wonderful, wonderful memories that will last a lifetime of, of, of being with family and, and just that sense that you are, uh, that you're just instilled with. Um, but, I, you know, I can remember our, we would we'd go to the store and get gas for the tractor and stop and have a sun drop, whatever, and then we would go in and, I mean, they took me everywhere. So, and that was just wonderful, but I got to go to some of these old places like that, and I can remember going in, and, you know, I, I didn't grow up being around kids my age. I was always around adults, which to me, I mean, I enjoyed it because I, I just always wanted to fit in. I grew up having to talk and, and interact, and, and that's you know I socialized with, with adults more than I did kids unless I was in school. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, and if you notice, I really can't say anything without using my hands. I'm kind of animated. So if I stand and pause, she'll tell you I'm, if I'm ever on the phone, I'm pacing back and forth. So I'll try not to make you motion sick. Um, but you know everybody knows the Tuckers. Everybody knows the Schweigers. And I, you know, we've heard all about the house, but a little personal note, um, 
Leo's youngest son, Barry, and I grew up together. Graduated high school together. In fact, I went had my, my nursery school. If anybody remember Miss Goldie's yeah. out there where where, where the Swigers live? Yeah. Well, that's the first place I learned to cut class because I would leave with Barry and we'd leave Miss Goldie's and go back over to his house. And sooner or later, somebody come and find us. Anyway, so and just more fun memories. And Annette brought up the St. Bernard connection, and I know that Mr. Swiger is still involved at St. Bernard. It's a place that's very near and dear uh, to a lot of folks, me especially. I, I can remember going out there to my dad's office with him, and I can remember one day he was supposed to be taking me to school over at East Elementary. And I don't know what was on his mind, but he just shot right on past the school. He had crossed the bridge and made the turn when he realized, oops. So that's okay. That's all right. I'm going to stay with you. So. I, he'd, he'd go to class every now and again. He'd leave me sitting in his chair in his office. People would come in. Like I said, I always interacted with, 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 with grown-ups, and that was, that was fine. But we've heard all about the house, like I said. So, And it's just, to me, this community is so full. I mean, it's just, it's ringing wet with, with history, with stories. Um, whether it be St. Bernard, and I don't know... If you taught school, my wife, if you, there's a book uh, by John Knowles called A Separate Piece. I don't know if any of you are familiar with it. I remember having to read that in school. And in my, in my mind's eye, I always envision just this little bucolic campus like St. Bernard. That, that's kind of the imagery that filled my head as I read the book. Uh, and I think we all, when the tornadoes came through, and I believe that was the, that November 87 storm that came through and it got the old gym and it took out some of those, those, those beautiful old trees out there and it damaged some of the other buildings where we had to take off the back half of the administration building and, and it kind of it really it changed the looks of it forever. But you can still go there and it's just, it's like a time capsule, it's like stepping back in time. So at least I can say, I'm, that I got to go and I got to see the, the pit and I got to see, I think it was Father Timothy that did the dragon down in the bottom. So that was, that was always, uh, that was a story that was... Uh, this has led us to, to know oh, yes. the history of Coleman. We the house behind mm -hmm. where our, the office is was a daycare. Yeah. And we've had a tremendous amount of people mm -hmm. come to us and say, we went to daycare behind the house, and sometimes, um, yes. and, and sometimes, it's Steve Smith. Yes. And sometimes, Miss mm -hmm. Tucker would make cookies and take to them. Uh -huh. And so they were always thrilled and had fond memories of that house, always smelling like cookies, mm -hmm. and her bringing cookies to them. Oh yes. And, you know, we have people come by and they'll say, oh, we used to climb trees in that yard, or we used to do this, or I used to come over, and so it, it's just, it's so nice to be able to preserve something like that, uh, that holds this night. I mean, we're creating memories there now, but we're preserving a place where, where people, they can still, it's still tangible to them, and that's, to me, that's important. Um, and we were, you know, we kind of came upon the house by accident, but... In a, in a way, I kind of think we were, it's kind of been a, ble a blessing, yeah. in a way. It, exactly. I guess so, because it's, it's something that, that's very near and dear to us now. Uh, and, you know, it's something it's I think we would both, opportunity came again, we'd love to do it again. Don't necessarily want to move the office, but just the idea of preserving what is our heritage. And we can't do so much, you know, with what Mother Nature brought to us back on April 27th, but, um, you know, I, we need to keep what we have. that registered at the Alabama Historical. You know, that's one yes. thing that we haven't oh, talked I about. I just want, because I was sitting here, Virgil, thinking what in the world would have happened to that house if they had not have gone there. Well, honestly, we you would know, have. and it just, it just really bothered me coming by there every day about why, why. People would stop when we first began work on, on the house and wanted to know. I think the first inclination was, well, they're tearing it down to do something to yeah. it. Or, what are you going to do with the rock? What are you going to do with this? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's interesting to note a lot of the rock that we used um, around some of the flower beds and then what was used um, at, 
the entry to the basement, the outside entry to the basement, was we found those loose on the property when they were digging up and kind of doing the site prep. We found all those rocks that were probably left over from when the hog house was built, um, and we're still finding things. Uh, and I think the, the old screens, the, the old screens for, for the windows were found in the garage up in the rafters. So we still have those. Uh, I wish we, we could repurpose the, them and reuse um, them. But we did not put the aluminum storm windows no. back on. We thought that would detract and take yeah. away from it. Yeah. Um, and they had put aluminum siding uh, on the underneath part of the porch and also um, around the windows. And so I asked, I contacted a painter and I said, can we paint that aluminum? I said, I just think that's so ugly. I said, but can we paint it? And he said, oh, yes, you can get this certain kind of paint. And so we got a certain kind of paint so that um, we could paint that it's aluminum so that it would look like wood. Mm -hmm. and well, there's, there's a story to that, too. I think, that uh, too. I think oh. Jimmy did that oh, when he okay. was living there, had all that stuff done. I've got to give her a plug. I think she's, she's watched enough home and garden television <laughs> and learned through osmosis and she went and she was looking for colors and, and she said you know I think this will work and we went back and one of the one of the, the carpenters we had working on it uh, the Welch's Dana Welch and his son Chad they looked and they looked at this sample and looked at it and said no no that's not that's never going to work no don't you do it the gentleman that was doing some of the painting said mm, no you don't want to do this it's a mistake and that said, humor me. <laughs> Just humor me. Which I've learned is do it. So, <laughs> anyway, so they do one window like that, and just lo and behold, she was right. Because it did. It just, bang. So, I, I, credit, I credit her with how that house looks from the outside. It's, and that, and the landscaping. She has a green thumb. She has a decorator's touch. And... I think she's made it something that we can all be proud of. And I, we were especially honored this past year when the Chamber did us a community improve, gave us a community improvement award uh, when they did their beautification award ceremony. Uh, totally unexpected, uh, but made us feel, you know, made us feel wonderful and made us feel proud at the same time that we were able to do something. Uh, and again, that quick, you know, we still don't have the outside where we want it. Um, as far as the, the lawn and everything, and some flat, yeah, and do, we've still got to get some more rock and finish doing borders and such. Uh, yes, sir. Question. Of the exterior walls, mm -hmm. on the inside, was it sheet rock or plaster? It was plaster, and had I thought, I saved a piece of it where they had to widen a doorway so we could, in the house, so we could, or a hall, or an opening to go to the hall. Plaster oh, yes. Yes. We did. That plaster, I'm here to is tell you. Plaster on lathes or is it on the No, it, it was it was um, it was on lathes. But now I'm gonna tell you, they had a. Um, it wasn't just a wire mesh that they used. It it was it was heavy duty steel. <laughs> uh, and they didn't just ever here and there attach it. It was attached everywhere they could. But that plaster was every bit inch and a half thick. It old horsehair plaster, and it is. I mean, it's just like tapping a concrete block. Uh, our our rock house was built the same year, mm -hmm. you know, just eight blocks away. Yeah. And uh, our walls, 13 inches solid masonry, and on the inside it's tile with plaster on the top. Oh my! And they forgot to leave any airspace, so naturally the water mm -hmm. comes yep. right in there with you. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty quiet, you know. Yes. Well, now ours doesn't, but it's, um, we did find out that it's 13 inches of rock on the exterior walls mm -hmm. because of when they did the jackhammering that I <laughs> almost fainted over. Uh, it was rock and plaster, uh, not plaster, rock and mortar, and then another layer of rock and then mortar. Oh, but there was, there's a little, the there interior, is an opening. So to answer your question, the interior walls are the ones he's talking about that had the heavy plaster. The exterior walls had that thick rock and then the lathe and the mesh and then the plaster. So, I mean, they're just huge. And they're and it's so um, economical, actually, because once it's cool, it's cool. 
or once it's warm, it's warm. So we can keep it uh, a constant temperature and regulate the temperature very well in there. But on the cold winter days, when that wall gets cold, it's cold. It's cold. <laughs> it's hard to heat. Mm -hmm. It can. It, it can be, and we, you know, we have. We didn't want to disturb much, so we, I've got this little heating and cooling unit upstairs that's that's ductless. Uh, so we didn't have to disturb that much there, uh, and it. Thankfully, I don't have to use it that often. The heat from downstairs kind of comes up, so. Uh, We've been lucky there. Is it at vents in the, in the floor? No, there's just one unit that's there's probably about three unit. feet. It's about three feet long, wide, rather. Um, sticks out from the wall, probably about eight inches, and it hangs there, and it's it's thermostatically controlled. And I've got the thermostat for it. It's sitting on the other end of the office upstairs, um, and it turns itself off and on as it needs to. Um, it's just, as we say, ductless. There's a small unit about the size of a suitcase sitting outside by the regular central yeah. unit and it just runs with a pipe that comes up through the wall and in behind the, the knee wall there. Uh, so we were we were, well, we were fortunate. Really well we are going to have an open house. Well, we have been planning to do it and we say we've been saying we're gonna do it. It's either been the, the dead of summer and then we got into winter and then we had some other things going on that, that was that took up a lot of time. Uh, but we are going to have an open house. But folks, y'all don't—you don't have to have. And the, the, an open house is an excuse. The door is always open. We're always mm -hmm. there. Come on in. I mean, we, we want you to see it. We we want you to. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's Coleman's house. I mean, we're just occupying it right now. So, but please come and and enjoy it with us. And I, I again, just, I thank y'all for having us. And I was just interested in how you were going to get enough parking place. Mm -hmm. for a, you know, a business because I never dreamed that you'd have to cut down the magnolia tree because it really, you know, when I turn that corner right there across from Newman, I think there's no way that they can get a parking lot big <laughs> enough behind here to get follow the guidelines. Right? Well, they wanted us to take the garage down. Did they? And, just, and we said, no, no, we need we wanted that for storage. Yeah. Uh, and that's where we archive and files out there. Originally, there's an entrance on, if you're facing the house to, at the front, yeah. on the right hand side, there is an entrance there. And originally, we had planned to have uh, a circular drive, have an entrance uh, off of yeah. 3rd Street, and then go out on Main Street, uh, go out. And we thought that would be too dangerous that people might not understand and they might try to turn in there, even. And we did have a few people to try to do that after we moved in that would try to turn in from Main Street, and that's dangerous to turn across yeah, traffic any time. So we didn't want people to do that. So that was another reason that we came up with a, a way to put parking spaces, and we had enough room to put six parking spaces there. And then, of course, if we need to, we can use uh, the street. The north we, side. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but six was all we were were required to have because of oh, the okay. uh, square footage okay. of the house. Okay. Coleman's yeah. premier parking genius name is Matt Pine. <laughs> <laughs> Are you that experienced with him? <laughs> <laughs> do you know him? Do you know him parking? <laughs> Folks, yeah, I'll be. We'll be happy to answer questions for you. But please, yeah, y'all just y'all come Who have a your couple. Plaster work. It, honestly, the, the the bulk of the plaster did not it's have intact. to be. It, it was intact. A few cracks. A so few cracks. So it was just. What we did is um, we just got some plaster and filled in the cracks, and then we had them to do what we call an orange peel, and we did it very light. So it's not. Uh, it was just a. You take a sprayer and you spray it on, and then paint, let it dry and paint over it. So it's it very, very, very it has a little yes. bit of texture. It's, it's, it's very, so very it's subtle. It's smooth plaster, but it's very subtle so that we didn't have to do a whole lot. That was just more economical and easy for us. Okay. Well, I'm surprised that house was in that great shape. It was. And you all took it over. The, really the one. I knew it hadn't been taken care of. I guess probably years. the the worst place 
in it, you might say, was the bathroom. Now, the oh, kitchen yeah. was great, but yeah. the bathroom um, had a hole in front of the, so the bathtub, uh, was. bathtub. So we had to take the bathtub out, and um, it, it was just a small hole, maybe um, six by six or something. It was a small hole, hole, but it had to be refloored there. It. We had to pack did it there. Did you just have one bathroom? It did. It just had thinking, yeah. one bathroom, and we had to had no closets. And no closets. <laughs> no closet. No. 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 There were a couple of built-ins. That's about it. This house was here for us. Exactly. Did y'all have There is one. There was one uh, built-in. It was after you know after the fact. Mm -hmm. It was built-in. Yeah. And I think wherever the pictures are, there was a. We left it, and it's great storage. That's where we store supplies, and also in the kitchen. When you walk in the kitchen on the right hand side, um, we took out the bottom uh, row of cabinetry, the base cabinetry, yeah. and left the wall cabinetry hanging and took the doors off and left it open and that's where we have supplies there also. Yeah. So it kind of looks neat since it's an office to have that open and, and then the rest of the cabinets yeah. uh, we left as they were. See, Did y'all's house have the closets in? Yeah, mm -hmm. but somebody yeah. remodeled it. Well, that's um, right, yeah. There's a reason that common houses didn't have to cost as much. Why? It's because uh, a lot of the houses were built uh, using some of the plans that the uh, immigrants from Germany used. They don't have closets in that's Germany. That's right, they don't. Still don't have because closets. the amount of their property tax is based on the number of rooms in the house in Germany, and they kind of closet as a room. room. Uh, Mr. Drinker told us that. Yeah. <laughs> There's no, one, one other interesting fact about this house that this was somewhat, uh, in my opinion, because I don't know about history in old houses. I really am not schooled in that at all. But it uh, was a very interesting fact. It seemed to be before its time. Is in the basement around the outer walls, the, there's a trough. And over in the corner, there's a drain. And of course, we have a sump pump in there to make sure that the rainwater goes out if it comes in. Um, but the basement is dry. We have just had great luck with that. I mean, we have our computer server down there. And as a matter of fact, my dad has never, my dad's 74 years old. He has never been afraid of storms until April of last year. And so twice this past month, uh, he and my mother came and got in the basement. They said, if yeah. that house has been there since 1947, yeah. he said, you give me a, a couch down here so I can sleep on it. But uh, I've got a table and chairs down there, and I've got my sewing machine down there. So the whole house. <laughs> but it's, the whole house. it's just yeah. nice. Yeah. That could be a it's it is. It is very quiet. It is, it is quieter than where we were on 31. Uh, it is it is extremely quiet. Now we still, you know, when the ambulance goes by, we know it. But other than that, it's it's very pleasant. Thank y'all for allowing us to bend here a little bit.